Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Charles Fox Parham because we have been on the subject of tongues, and Robin and I did a video last week called Biblical Tongues or Gibberish. Now, where did this all start? Well, it started way back. I mean, even before Parham. If you look on my YouTube channel, you'll see that I have a playlist called Tongues Before Parham. And 1901, is when Parham and his students at Bethel Bible College in Topeka, Kansas, supposedly received the gift of tongues for the first time since Pentecost. And I'm going to show that to you in a newspaper article momentarily. But even though Parham thought that this was the first time since Pentecost that anyone received the gift of tongues, you can go back and look at incidents that took place with Edward Irving and the Irvingites. You can look uh, at what took place with Mary Campbell and the Shakers and others. So this was not the first Pentecost since the original Pentecost. But Kaparam and his students believed that they had received the gift of tongues. It was on Deci it was supposedly on January 1st of uh, 1901, New Year's Day, Agnes I. Osmond asked Charles Parham to lay hands on her and pray that she received the gift of tongues. Supposedly, the Holy Spirit fell on her and she started speaking in Chinese and she couldn't do anything but speak in Chinese, sing in Chinese, and even write in Chinese. Anyway, Charles Parham thought that he could take this gift of tongues that he and his students supposedly received and that they could go all over the world and preach the gospel to unreached people in their own languages. And yes, Charles Parham did believe that the gift of tongues were actual languages. He didn't believe that it was gibberish like what you see today in the many charismatic churches. He really did believe that these were languages. Well, that's what he did. He held a big, um, a big convention and brought people in and uh, to, to go out and be missionaries. And he thought... No more language schools. We don't have to go to school anymore. We don't have to learn the languages of the people we want to reach. Well, we can just pray and receive the gift of tongues. God will give it to us and we'll just go over there to, uh, to the people we're trying to reach and we'll speak their language and they'll be able to understand it. And we will reach the world for Christ through uh, this new gift of tongues that we received. Well, many went to India. China and other places around the world and were quite embarrassed when they got there because when they got there, guess what? They found out that they didn't really have the gift of tongues. No one understood them. This is that story. So here we are over at newspapers.com. We're looking at the Honolulu Advisor from May 31st, 1901. This is the article right here. New kind of missionaries, envoys to the heathen, should have gift of tongues. Topeka, May 20th, Reverend Charles F. Parham of the College of Bethel at Topeka and his followers are preparing to give the people of the churches some new work along the line of missionary endeavor. His plan is to send among the heathen persons who have been blessed with the gift of tongues a gift which he says no others have ever had conferred upon them since apostolic times. His missionaries, as he points out, will have the great advantages of having the languages of the various peoples among whom they work miraculously conferred upon them and will not be put to the trouble of learning them in the laborious way by which they are acquired by other prospective missionaries. Our summer Bible school will begin in Topeka, June 10th, said Reverend Mr. Parham last night. It will be held on the campus of the college. We are expecting thousands of missionaries, evangelists, and other people from all parts of the United States who desire to become missionaries to attend. There is no doubt that at this time, they will have conferred on them the gift of tongues if they are worthy and seek it in faith, believing. They will thus be made able to talk to the people whom they choose to work among in their own language, which will, of course, be an inestimable advantage. The students of Bethel College do not need to study in the old way to learn the languages. They have them conferred upon them miraculously. 
different ones have already been able to converse with Spaniards, Italians, Bohemians, Hungarians, Germans, and French in their own language. I have no doubt that knowledge of Chinese, Japanese, the various dialects of the people of India, and even the language of the savages of Africa will be received during our meeting in the same way. I expect this gathering, watch this, to be the greatest since the days of Pentecost. What an arrogant statement that is. And did those students, those who desire to become missionaries, go over to foreign countries and converse with the heathen in their own languages? Well, let's find out. Let's look at an article now from the Evening Times Republican, March 7th, 1908, just a few years later. And this is the article right here, Tongue Deluded Missionaries. The movement known as the gift of tongues seems to prove a curious delusion to those who attempt to test it practically. Missionary S.C. Todd of the Bible Missionary Society writes from Mako, China, of investigations he made in the three great mission fields of the world, China, Japan, and India, concerning four different groups of workers who have come out thinking that their gift of tongues was a language with which they could speak to the people. He adds that all of these, when arriving on the field, found they were mistaken and that they could not preach to the people any more than other missionaries who never heard of the power to speak in tongues. Some of the deluded ones have found means to get to the East only to meet disaster and poverty there. Many who speak in tongues and feel they are called to the mission field are wholly unprepared by nature or training to be missionaries and yet are starting for the field. One woman in the United States wrote to the missionary that her 14-year-old daughter has the gift of tongues and can speak in some dozen or more languages. This child feels called to China. Specific cases are given in the Baptist Argus Louisville by this writer. Thus, I have been asked about a certain Mr. McIntosh, notwithstanding his statements that he expected to preach at once to the people, he has been wholly unable to do so. He must not only have an interpreter in preaching, but also in the simplest affairs of everyday life. From the day of his arrival in China until now, neither he nor his wife has been able to speak a single sentence in Chinese. I do not speak from rumor, but from personal knowledge and the personal admission of failure by Mr. McIntosh himself. As to Japan, while there, I met a party of about a dozen missionaries who had come out from the state of Washington on the Pacific coast. I visited them in their homes and attended one of their services. They, too, expected to speak at once to the people, but on reaching Japan, they were powerless to do so. They admitted to me their inability, and I saw it with my own eyes. As to India, you remember that Reverend A. G. Gar and wife were there, also expecting to speak to the people in this supernatural way. But did they? They have now left India and are in Hong Kong. I have attended two of their services. Mr. Gar, in reply to a personal question of mine as to whether he or his wife had been able to talk in the native language of India, said that they had been unable to do so. Again, two ladies came on from the Japan party to Hong Kong because they felt they had the gift of the Hong Kong dialect. I have seen them inquired of their power to talk in Chinese, and they too are unable to speak.